To mark the 200th anniversary of the founding of the town of Greece, the Greece Historical Society presents a bicentennial snapshot. Each week, we take a look at a particular aspect of Greece history. Today, we pay tribute to the men from Greece who died in World War I. Last Friday, November 11, we honored our military veterans. But as many of you know, the holiday used to be called Armistice Day, marking the end of World War I at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month. The United States' involvement in that first world war has a connection dating back to the Revolutionary War. In her quirky history, Lafayette and the Somewhat United States, Sarah Vowell describes Lafayette's celebratory tour of the United States in 1824 and 25, just before the country marked the 1826 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. You may recall that the Marquis de Lafayette, as a 19-year-old, fought in the American Revolutionary War. As Vole relates stories of his appearances in various cities, she emphasizes that America would not have won the war without the help of France. Of course, the author wasn't able to write about every place Lafayette visited. One place she left out was the town of Greece. Lafayette came to Rochester from Lockport on June 7, 1825, via the Erie Canal. He disembarked in Greece at what was called the Western Wide Waters. Today, it is where the parking lot for Rochester Products is. The surrounding land at the time was owned by Bradford King, the eldest son of Gideon King, who was one of the founders of the first European settlement west of the Genesee at King's Landing. We told you about King's Landing in snapshot number four. Arriving on the Seneca Chief, leading a flag-decked flotilla of 12 canal packets, Lafayette and his son, George Washington Lafayette, were greeted by booming cannon and the ringing of every bell in the village. After the Americans liberated Paris, the French celebrated July 4, 1917, with a ceremony at Lafayette's tomb. American Colonel Charles E. Stanton began his speech saying, Lafayette, nous voilà. Lafayette, we are here, implying that the American soldiers were repaying the debt owed to France for their aid to this country during the Revolutionary War. The World War Service record of Rochester and Monroe County lists 17 men from the town of Greece as giving their lives in World War I. They are James P. Armstrong, killed in action August 22, 1918. Clarence S. Baxter, died of pneumonia on October 27, 1918. William H. Brown, died February 18, 1923, from gas burns suffered in the World War. Wesley John Christian, died June 6, 1918, from wounds received in action. George J. Dietrich was killed on October 15, 1918. Charles A. Emmerich was killed in action September 29, 1918. Romulo Ipococo died of pneumonia October 17, 1918. Carl A. Glanzel was killed in action August 19, 1918. Frank Leo Gaylord died June 11 from wounds received in action. Thomas Herbert Iveson died of wounds received in action July 19, 1918. Ira James Jacobson was killed in action October 18, 1918. Pierre Cornelius Miche died of pneumonia October 13, 1918. Raymond J. Quinlan died of pneumonia February 6, 1919. George W. Quinn killed in action September 29, 1918. James Scorch, killed by a shell fragment October 4, 1918. William E. Sun, died on November 30, 1918, of pneumonia. Sam Tacone, died of pneumonia February 11, 1919. Arthur J. Tallinger, died of pneumonia February 8, 1919. 
A staggering number of soldiers died during the First World War of non-combat illnesses. Bacterial pneumonia was one of the chief causes of death. Penicillin, which could have saved these soldiers' lives, was discovered in 1928. It was administered to soldiers in World War II before being widely used with the general public beginning in 1948. Thanks for joining us this week. Next week, we will talk about two Greece fire departments. This is Maureen Whalen inviting you to join us next Tuesday for another Bicentennial Snapshot presented by the Greece Historical Society. Want to learn more from the Greece Historical Society and Museum? Then click that subscribe button for more content and hit that bell icon to get notified when there's more Bicentennial Snapshots. You can visit us on the web at greasehistoricalsociety.org. You can find us on Facebook at Greece Historical Society. You can follow us on Twitter at Greece NY History, and you can stop in at the Greece Historical Society at 595 Long Pound Road.